you go out and hunt an animal and you know you kill it, you're creating death, pain, misery, no matter how you talk about it, there's no way of getting around that. Okay? And so we kind of have to look at that and say, okay, that's culture of death. Death, pain, ministry, we're not really connected. Yes, you can do ceremony and do that, but the animal still suffers. And you take that suffering into you, and it comes out of you as disease. Okay. But worse, what we're talking about ultimately is the, the survival of the planet. And, and all the major, I'm going to say, middle of the world agencies, the United Nations, the European Union, um, you know, these are obviously not vegetarian agencies by any sorts of manager, are all saying if we are going to survive as a species, we've got to cut back on animal agriculture significantly. The trend is moving into a more plant source only diet. Now, what do, what do we know about plant source only diet? Well, meat eaters have two to four times more diabetes, uh, heart, heart disease, 26% um, versus 2% of, uh, of, of vegetarians have high blood pressure. And it goes on and on and on. The meat eaters have four times the amount of osteoporosis. Uh, a vegetarian woman will have less osteoporosis than a meat eating man. So we have a full range of all kinds of problems and we can just simply avoid it by going into what I call the culture of life and liberation, which is a plant source only diet. And that is going to be healing automatically for the planet. And that is something that connects us to all, everybody. I don't mean just humans, but you know, it connects us to the animals. Because if you're eating them, you're not so connected. You're connected in a different way, let's put it that way. Your heart isn't connected. So, these are the big factors. Now, the next thing that is really missing uh, that I've observed again at the Tree of Life is that about 60% of the population needs a little bit higher protein and about 40% needs a little bit higher carbohydrate. So the diet has to be organized to your constitution. You have to figure that out. So in my book, Conscious Eating, the Rainbow Green Life Food Cuisine, we have charts that you can fill out to figure if you are, you know, whether you're a person that needs a higher protein diet or a lower protein diet, higher complex carbohydrate or lower complex carbohydrate. So those are very, very important things. So if you aren't eating for your constitution, you aren't, you know, dealing with the low minerals, you know, that's in the soils and so forth, um, you have a problem. The final thing is really a shift in consciousness because what we our consciousness is both the, the result and cause of our diet so part of what happens is we, we, we have to shift our consciousness about what's important in life so when you go and the, the two diets are very distinct and it's very important to understand that so we have there's a shift in consciousness when you the spiritual energy is awakened particularly when I use the word kundalini, we naturally will give up meat, fish, chicken, and dairy because it's a sludge to the kundalini. It's a sludge to the evolution of consciousness. Second, we have to recognize that um, meat eaters and people who are on, whether it's raw or uh, you know, plant source only cooked, all will have deficiencies that they have to uh, uh, pay attention to. And, and there are actually identical, uh, you know, very identical deficiencies. Mediators are quite low in B12 as well, for example. My experience, and I'm talking as a clinician now, person has been doing live food for 28 years. I see all the ups and downs. I made a clear statement that we do need supplements, but I also make a very clear statement. We do not need any supplements specifically from animals. We don't need deer antler. There's plenty of ways to, to build growth hormone without deer antler. We're meant to work in harmony with the animals. Okay? But we don't need any of these hormonal things. There's plenty of ways to do it 
um, homeopathy wise and there's all kinds of things you know uh, working with supplements that you can get the results without oppressing animals let's go back to the past where does that take us cannibalism polygamy slavery okay oppression of women that's all what we're kind of tuning in on so People will value the past and so forth, but what, it's a fantasy. Well, you can go out hunting, and a few people can hunt. I'm going to call it survival, healthy survivalist, but they're not seeing themselves as one with things. It's just impossible to, to do that, you know, uh, and, and see yourself as one. And, and that everybody tends to gloss over the fact that in the Native Americans, there's been two major studies that have shown that 60%, 60% of Native Americans of the tribes were plant source only. That's a pretty big statement nobody likes to make. You know, and they cite the the Plains Indians. Well, what are they gonna eat on the plains? Sand? I mean, so we have to be kind of realistic, but really what I'm talking about is a kind of a retroactive nostalgia for the past, like the you know, a kind of a Republican conservatism, uh, based with some health interests, but it's really not moving forward. Now, what what is moving forward? What's moving forward is culture of life and liberation where we're wanting the whole planet to evolve. The future of the planet is a future, uh, you know, is really based on a uh, live food, plant source only, non-exploitive diet where everyone is uh, is, is elevated. And so we really have uh, the, these different worlds. And even though one may be charismatically presented, in, in the end, all agriculture can be done without animals. And I want to make a point about that because um, certain people say, oh, you know, you need uh, animals for agriculture. No, absolutely not. As a person that's been on live foods for 28 years, and somebody like Peter Ragnar has been on for 30 years, uh, you know, at 68, I'm doing 200 push-ups every few days. I have full vital energy. I'm exercising. I'm doing all these things. Peter Ragnar is an example of a person who's built tremendous cheese in his late 70s. And he uh, does basically the same kind of diet as I do. We've tested it. I, I test my people. I, I have many people on the same diet. And their blood scores, their blood tests, their insulin, their leptin, all these things... They're all normal. We don't need animal products to do this. And it's de-evolutionary. Animals are highly toxic today. You know, we have depleted uranium. It's 15 times higher in milk. Okay? We have, uh, when, when Chernobyl went off, um, the rate of perinatal mortality in, in, in the Boston area uh, increased 900% because radioactive iodine is coming over. The cows are eating it. They eat in the grass and they produce the milk or colostrum, whatever's going on, and the, the mothers are picking it up. So the animal and the fish in Lake Michigan, where I grew up, two blocks from it, they did a major study out of the, at one of the universities in, in Detroit where you had one helping of fish a month as a pregnant mother, and your baby had a lower neurological score, uh, and 17 years later had lower SAT scores college entrance exam scores. Now, you, you have to be brain dead to figure out. You don't want to be eating high up on the food chain. It's real simple. Dioxin and Ben and Jerry's ice cream, because they did the study in Ben and Jerry's, I'm sure it's true for all ice creams, is so concentrated it's 200 times higher than is acceptable. Because when you go from dairy to yogurt to cheese, you're concentrated from 10 to 25 times and to ice cream. So what I'm saying is, you don't want to eat higher up in the food chain. It's so, and it's a basic survival issue. So, taking animal parts is it's, it's just not it's not only not necessary; it's really not safe. Like, who needs to take those risks? So you're taking unnecessary risks for very little gain, which you can get a variety of other ways using you know of appropriately planned food concentrate superfoods and. Uh, obviously super herbs. Where we were uh, 
at the turn of the century, 19th century, there's only one, one to two percent of the people had cancer. Now we're at 33 percent. And what we're doing is, is a tremendous amount of pollution. So we have to adjust our diet, not only to be ecologically sane, and that's when I say the EU unit, the United Nations are all saying, we've got to go vegetarian in that way. It isn't that complicated. We don't need to go to extremes to get good nutrition. That's what, as I said, what I'm doing with Peter Ragnar, uh, I'm going to say Brian, you know, Clements, uh, Victor Kovinskis. None of these people who've been around a long time are having to do any of this. You don't need to. And you don't need to take any risk. And ultimately the bottom line is do we choose to be part of the culture of life and liberation and create a, a diet that's going to elevate the whole planet? So what I'm talking about is the evolution of consciousness and the evolution of the human species. And that's the diet I'm recommending is one that supports the evolution of consciousness, the evolution of species on all levels. And it isn't a meat, not only not meat centered, but we don't need any meat because the animal, the way the plant's going, the animals are just simply, I don't care if they're wild or not, they're just too polluted. So, blessings to everyone, and may we all hopefully join the idea of the continual evolution of consciousness and of the human and of all species on the planet and of the living planet.